day 248 was a cloudy day this is with full trigger pressure restored by watering within the last 24 to 48 hours and this is what it looks like normally if you haven't watered for maybe a week and a half or beyond you know maybe beyond 10 days uh, since this is a very small diameter pot that flares out at the top um, it dries out very easily these are very thirsty so I started excavating this tiny pot it was a lot easier to do this than for my previous video on the channel the California wild grape vine cuttings uh, finale for the series and there were a lot of dead seedlings in here I'll show you uh, some close-ups later talk about the anatomy a little bit so yeah these things have roots for sure but they're very thin and um, you know, just sort of like fibers, uh, nothing really robust like the California wild grapevine. So, you know, that just implies that the California wild grapevine it has to compete with tree roots in its uh, native riparian zone habitats in California and whatnot. So, that basically has to go really, really deep, really quickly to get enough water. Whereas these are from a more tropical environment. So they don't need that much in terms of a root system. So in this case, unlike the California wild grape, the shoot system has a lot more mass and is a lot more impressive in terms of size. But as you can see here, uh, there's kind of a root encirclement at the bottom. And I'll show you a close-up of uh, the leftover parts of the seeds that are still attached and just don't seem to rot away. But yeah, it forms a circle at the bottom. Um, a cross pattern that fits the bottom watering tray and after you shake everything off there's really not all that much root mass so I'm gonna save this dirt and use it for a future series and you know vacuum after this it's always a huge mess here's what my two seedlings look like without any dirt to obscure the root systems and part of the stem that's underneath the soil stems pretty thick and robust uh, for its size these are the two halves of the endosperm which provided nutrients for the developing seed embryos and this brown stuff is a seed coat it's kind of brittle I don't know if it was going to degrade all that fast but the two halves of the endosperm definitely haven't they just stay somewhat you know healthy and organic looking they don't seem like they're rotting and they just don't seem like they're going away either so they just stay attached to the base of the root system you know where the seed germinated and that woody um, consistency coat on the outside the endocarp that stuff is all long gone I can't find any traces of that so that degraded so yeah basically it looks like a bunch of peanuts underground and all those uh, small seedlings, you know, they just stay there. They didn't rot either. That's completely unlike the cases of sweet potato tubers or ginseng roots. You know, fleshy roots that totally rot away if you overwater. And then you can't even find any traces of them when you dig in with gloves a few weeks later. So this series saw very little interest. Um, I don't think a lot of people know about loquat fruits or would search for this on the internet. I thought there would be more, maybe from Asia, but you know, that's just the way it is. It's crapshoot going to any series. Uh, sometimes it just doesn't garner any interest and it takes a few weeks for me to find out statistically if you know people are really interested in things. Sometimes it takes a few months for a plant series to ramp up in search traffic and interest. I probably could have gotten much better results over the last two to three months if I had these in a much bigger pot. It seems like the root ball had saturated all the available soil at the bottom. Again, uh, the pot flaring out at the top doesn't help because that's not where the roots will grow. But yeah, thanks for watching my Growing Low Quat from Seed series. And please subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for new plant series and further updates.